Hello everyone, J.P. Cormier back here at the J.P. Cormier channel here in Ginger's Barn. Uh, if you uh, like my channel, you like the stuff we do on here, please, please, please hit subscribe. It helps us build our, our base and helps YouTube uh, put ads on our videos so we can get paid. And at this point in time, the pandemic's taken all of our income except what we're earning right here on YouTube. And and I have to admit, everybody's doing a fantastic job of keeping us alive. Um, so, this is the Recording King versus Martin answer. It didn't take long to get uh, a, 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 nearly a, a, at least a hundred respondents. I think there might even be a couple over a hundred. Um, but the results are shocking shocking more shocking than the alvarez so i'm going to give you some numbers here and the um i'm going to give you uh, some different percentages i'm going to give you a straight percentage on on either end and then we're, we're going to look at a couple of different metrics that happened together because of the way people responded so we got there those figures too in our spreadsheet um so here's the numbers and this really blew my mind uh 52 percent of the 100 or so or a little over 100 respondents correctly identified the martin okay 52 percent now uh the people who miss uh misidentified the martin or preferred the recording king or thought they were virtually identi identical i even had one guy tell me he thought i used the same guitar for both he said you, you've just played one guitar 51 percent and then the people who preferred the martin or correctly identified it uh was 49 percent so the overall percentage okay of the people that went for the martin opposed to the recording king 51 percent to the martin 49 percent to the recording king and again uh 51 percent of those people mistook the recording king for the martin some of them some of them did like some of them some of them were sure it was the martin some were saying like you know, I'm not sure which one is the Martin, but I like this one. If 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 there's a Martin and there's probably this one, and they were talking about the Recording King. So, there's. It's a close race, right? Right? No, it's not a close race at all, and I'm gonna tell you why. This guitar here, the Clarence White D28 Martin. It's 15 years old. It's been played thousands of hours, thousands of hours. This guitar is already aged, already broken in. To be honest with you, it's not really playing that well anymore. It needs some work. And but the point is, this guitar cost six thousand six thousand six hundred dollars. Six thousand dollars I paid for this guitar. Six thousand dollars dollars okay this guitar has only been out of the shipping crate for four days and it's been played 
for f a few hours tops. I mean, I'm talking and it's ringing, right? And This guitar costs under a thousand dollars US. Under a thousand dollars. Big, big difference. So I, I can't think of any other way this could have turned out that is better than this to prove my point. That again, I have nothing against Martin or any of these of those large worldwide builders right they have a place they have a, a massive legacy they caused most of most of us to start playing the guitar and we wanted these guitars because they were played by our heroes but I can tell you one thing and, and it makes me a little angry when I go into a music store and I see a guitar like this for a thousand dollars or nine hundred dollars or whatever it might be in the United States, it's about a thousand here, a thousand to thirteen hundred. I see this guitar for thirteen hundred dollars, and then I look beside it and I see a D twenty eight, a standard D twenty eight Martin, if you can even find one, because now all the Mar all you see for Martins in stores are these strange hybrid, partially laminate. They're made in Mexico off-brand no rhyme or reason to the model numbers they're just they're not really martins i i consider martins to be 18 28 35 and 45 and 41 that's it those are the only martins i'm interested in playing those are the original model lineup right and the different body sizes they're d's double o's triple o's on and on that goes so i walk in the store I see this guitar for a thousand bucks and I look beside it and I see a standard D28 for four grand. W what the hell? Why? Why would I pay four thousand dollars because of a name on a headstock? And that's what bothers me. And I, like I said in the initial video, you know, these guys have a choice. Martin and Gibson and Taylor, they all have a choice. They have a choice to. They know how to build great guitars, and they have a choice as to whether they're going to build them or not, and whether or not they're going to make them available to musicians. I know working musicians who can't for, afford a Martin. That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard, right? This, this is a workhorse. This is the guitar of the world. The Martin guitar is, is it, right? Wrong. There's lots of people I know that can't afford one. Not a good one. They might be able to afford some partially laminate mahogany body, you know, whatever, that's got some, whatever the f flavor number of the month is on the label inside. But there's no way they're going to afford a 28 or a 35. And God forbid that they want to start going up into the 40 series. Like a D45 right now is well over $10,000, well over ten grand, And... I just don't see it. I wish these companies would make the guitars they used to make and make them affordable for guys who play. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it shouldn't be that difficult. I shouldn't have to get a loan to buy a goddamn guitar. So that's why. And I'm, I'm, I'm very pleased that this happened this way. And uh, Recording King, what are you going to do, right? it's it came it, if there was if there was any problem with this guitar the numbers would have been way different right and if martin's uh, name on the headstock of this instrument here made a difference the numbers would have been way different you know would have been 90 10 for the martin or 95 to 5 for the martin but it wasn't it was half and half and a lot of people couldn't tell the difference 
So, be smart. Be smart and play good instruments that don't cost you a lot, of, a ton of money. And if you are going to spend a ton of money, go to a go to a reputable builder before you go to the big three. Seriously, because you know they already have millions of dollars, and there's a lot of great builders out there. Robin Boucher among them, and you and all kinds of them. Collings, uh, Thompson. Hassan Dalton, uh, Bourgeois. There's so many great builders out there. If you want to spend thousands of dollars on a guitar, that's where I would go, right? I don't know, whether, unless I knew I was given, having my Martin built in their custom shop by men instead of partially by machine, that's a different story. I could get a custom shop guitar, but a custom Martin would cost you twenty or five or $30,000. And you can get the same quality of instrument from these other boutique builders for five or six thousand. So, again, as much as we love Martin, and I do, trust me, I don't have anything against Martin or Gibson or Taylor or any of these guys. I just wish that their prices were where they should be. They should be charging what the, what they're worth, you know. And if they, unless they want to start going back and making guitars by hand, the way of the, the way these other boutique builders are doing it, it's not fair to charge all this premium simply because there's a decal on the headstock. So I've noticed something about this guitar too. Of, over the day I've been playing it today, I used it in a recording session today, and uh, I used it on my music school today. Did a guitar a, a, a lesson video with it. And it's getting better. It's actually opening up over the last three or four days. knocking it out of tune after all this time that's how little I've played it but anyhow there's the there it is boys and girls it's uh, it's awesome and these are great guitars these are great guitars I'm gonna probably probably gonna do a little work on a little a little bit of work on the uh, a tiny bit of work on the action on this guitar. It, it's not serious, but I probably will do a little, a little bit of work on the nut to get it down where I want it. And I might even take the saddle down here so it's a little more my speed. And but as I say, most guitar, most guitar builders are doing that. They ship with a high nut, and high, high, high saddle, uh, so that you can adjust it yourself. And uh, this is definitely a guitar that's going to stay in my stable. stop playing it anyhow <laughs> there you go there's the comparison and uh whatever like i say whatever you love to play play it you know i'm not going to tell you not to buy a martin don't i'm not doing that but be smart don't spend a ton of money if you don't have to and check this company out you want to see some killer dreadnought guitars for under a thousand dollars u.s <laughs> You're looking at it, buddy, right here. Recording King. My name is J.P. Cormier, and I want to thank everybody for participating in this. And, yeah, there you go. It, wish it was better. I wish it, <laughs> wish it was been better for Martin, but it, it wasn't. So, anyhow, I, I appreciate you guys. Thanks a lot, and we'll see you next time here on the J.P. Cormier channel. And uh, stay safe. Keep picking. Love yous. Bye.